Hi, this is James Engel, Full Capital, and I've got Lisa Landry of Landry Designs with me today. Uh, Lisa, thanks for jumping on. Thanks for having me, James. Uh, so Lisa, um, maybe to kick it off, give everyone a little bit of your background and then um, a little bit about your company, and then uh, we'll jump into um, some pictures of recent, recently done deals. Um, so go ahead. Sounds good. Uh, I started my interior design company, Landry Designs, over 20 years ago, and really started with res residential, moved into commercial, and then added multifamily about 10 or 12 years ago. And now we've done probably 150 projects that are multifamily related. So um, we do projects across the country. Now, you know, we're based in DFW, but we go across the country and we're specializing in like leasing office makeovers, model unit makeovers, exterior paint renovations and renderings, um, even helping with signage and branding and logos and th that sort of thing so that we get a cohesive branding across the property. So we assist with trying to take as much off of the owner's plates as we possibly can, the apartment owner's plates as possible. Uh, and we become one of their partners to come in and just help get all those renovations done. And just a few years ago, I started investing myself as a multifamily investor as an LP first and then syndicated my first deal last September. And now I'm under contract on another deal. So I think it's been beneficial to be on the ownership side after so many years of being just on the decorating side and see really how do we boost the NOI? How do we get that number up and, you know, reduce expenses? And we, we spend so much time on the property when we're redoing these um, communities that we get sort of an inside look at what's really happening. And that's beneficial for us to share with the ownership team as well. Um, so I come from the exact same, or sorry, exact different background of you, right? I have uh, very little creativity and very little <laughs> uh, design aspect to, uh, to me. So I, I really appreciate um, like some of the stuff that you guys have just been amazed by. And so I'll, I'm going to pull up some slides now. Um, okay. I think uh, this is just of your on your website, so people can go to Landry Designs. And um, you know, one of the things when somebody, especially in the past couple of years, everybody's come in and really talked about, all right, this is what we're going to do on the leasing office and the model unit, and really change the interiors. Um, but maybe talk through some of these pictures that I'm going to scroll through in terms of sort of what you guys did at these leasing offices? Okay. What we really specialize in, really our sweet spot is B and C class properties. And I think people tend to think that they, you know, can be less than, than A class properties, but they really need to look like an A class property. I feel like they need to look like a model home when people walk in. The leasing office in particular is like what we call the jewel of the property. It's the first impression space when people come in. It needs to look amazing. You have about 15 seconds to make this impression and people will typically decide in about that 15 seconds if they're going to want to live in that community or not. So it's not only does it look amazing, but are they greeted immediately? Does someone stand up to greet them? What are the sounds when they come in? Is there music playing? Does the door squeak when it opens? Um, you know, what are the smells? Does it smell fresh? Is there trash out? All those elements come to play in about that first 15 seconds. So our job is to create a lot of drama. It doesn't have to be real high end. You know, these properties are all B and C class that you're looking at here, but it needs to be really amazing looking when they walk in. Um, so we're, we're always creating some sort of lounge. We try to add cool chandeliers, great lighting of some sort, some mid-level lighting. So it's not just all overhead lighting. We make sure that it's super functional for the people who work there, because we think it's Kind of the trifecta, we call it, where, you know, potential residents, it needs to look great for them so that they want to live there. Um, current residents, they're proud of where they live when their leasing office looks great. And that door is a revolving door. It's amazing how many people come in and out of the leasing offices still, even though they're supposed to be doing, you know, maintenance requests online and, um, you know, paying online, they still come into the leasing office a lot. And then the third thing, the third part of the trifecta is really that the on-site team loves coming to work in a space that looks so great and is functional, and it helps them to be able to get their occupancy up and, and you know, raise rents because everything looks so great. So you typically have lower turnover of your on-site staff once these makeovers are done. 
So that's, that's what we're focused on in leasing offices. And we're looking at what color palette we're going to use based on what the exterior of the property looks like. Are we staying with an existing brick color? Like in this case, this brick on this fireplace, we were able to paint it. The owner was very open to us painting it. And the ceiling was like a brown wood before, and it looked really rustic. And we wanted to make it look a lot more modern because that's the design that we're typically going for today. And that's what people are looking for. So, you know, we, we always offer and, and broach the subject of, could we paint all that wood? And, and sometimes people are like, no way. And, and he was very open to it. So that made the biggest difference in this space was painting that ceiling black, the fireplace brick black. And then the outside of the, the building was a neutral brick and that was not changed, but we still made it work with it. We're also always looking at, you know, if the outside brick is, let's say, red or orange or, or tan or whatever it is, we need to make sure whatever color palette we choose looks great with it because you do see out those windows, you know, to the space. And I, I know we, we're going through a bunch of these, but ballpark, what are most people spending on leasing offices right now? It depends on how large the leasing office is. And we have a multifamily menu of services that we share with people. And it has all the different spaces and all the different budget ranges. So it depends on how many on-site staff you have and how many spaces there are. But I would say on average, people are spending 15000 to maybe 100000 on their leasing office, depending on how large it is. Some of them have fitness centers in them. Some of them have business centers in them. Some of them have you know, multiple kitchens or multiple baths. So it really depends on how large the space is. All it's right. funny. And then, yeah, so I was just, just going to say, yeah, Go ahead. it's funny because uh, a lot of times when people do their first project with us, they've budgeted such a small amount for the leasing office and we can do something with it typically, but it's not going to be like amazing like these pictures are. And so for their next project, they always budget a little bit more. Um, I literally, you know, work with them on their budgets for, for all their CapEx projects to see, you know, I would recommend putting a little more here, a little less here, because this is the, the leasing office in particular is the thing that can get that lease closed when you have new people come in. So obviously people go to a leasing office like that, and then they, they, their first step outside is into the model unit. So maybe touch on model units and what you guys have done um, yes. on some of these. Yeah, and a lot of times we go into the model units and they're just so bland. So like in this case, um, there was a fur down over that kitchen bar that we had removed. And, you know, it was an expense to, to take that out, but man, it opened it up so much. And we test a lot of times we we'll recommend doing two or three different unit interiors packages and we can assist with those. And like in this case, this was the top level of the packages that we created. It was called the platinum package. And it has the backsplash, it has a micro hood that we added. When you add a micro hood, you're getting that microwave off the countertop. And these countertops are so small that every unit we walked into, the microwave was sitting on the countertop, taking all of the space of the counters. So that's, you know, a small thing, but man, people love that. Um, and even adding pendant lights to the kitchen. And then in the bedrooms, making sure that it's not too crowded. Um, a lot of times we go in and it's just like you almost can't walk around the space and these rooms are not real large in many cases. So leaving it open and airy and still super dramatic and inviting, but not too crowded. Like we didn't use a nightstand on the right side. We only used one on the left. Stuff, stuff that most people would not see, but yes. <laughs> on the, uh, but then you notice right immediately, yes. like when you do walk into, um, a place that has been professionally decorated and it looks just a lot better. Um, yes. So in terms of, so we went through leasing office model units, anything else that you would want to talk about on your website here in terms of pictures? Um, you could go to the exterior. I think that was a little higher up exterior paint. This is an area that, you know, a lot of people want to freshen up something on the exterior. So like in this case, this building was going to be completely painted. They were open to color. They were open to doing something cool on the end. If you do have a big wall that's exposed to a main road or a highway that you can put a big logo or a mural or something that's more eye catching there, that's a great, you know, option because look at the before, you know, and after of this piece. And if you're driving by, which one's going to draw your eye more? Um, so we do work with you know, clients on renderings, and we'll usually give them two or three different options, and then they can pick their favorite. And, you know, we can always play with color and, and that kind of thing. But like in this case, the, um, the brick, you know, was if you're retaining the brick, you're limited to what kind of color palette you can use. 
And for example, this one that you have up, we gave them this option of this indigo blue, but we also gave them an option of sort of a brick red and a sage green. Any of those three could have worked. And it's best to develop your color palette before you change your logo so that you're sure that everything is working, you know, in conjunction with everything else. And if, if we come in late and someone's already picked their logo and, you know, all of those things, then we're stuck with that color palette. And that might not really work with the brick that's on the building. So it's great for owners to pull us in early, even when they're making offers or, you know, right when the LOI is accepted. We love to come in early. We start looking at the website. What does that look like? You know, there are so many websites that just don't look great. And that's the very first thing that people look at. So making sure the website looks great and all the pictures are fresh and updated. And that's that's what we work through with even logos and color palettes. Yeah, like um, we looked through a lot of packages. And I think on your transaction, you pretty much had the full um logo rebrand what you guys were going to do here's how the model is going to look like here's the leasing office like a lot of people they say yep we're spending twenty thousand on the leasing office and we're spending ten thousand a door on the interiors and the bank is like all right so how's that going to look what are you going to change and i think in yours you had like all right here's the classic here's the upgraded and this is exactly how it's going to look and we already did it at this property like that is a huge differentiator um out there in the market so i think um if people are not doing that they should definitely reach out to you i don't know if that's what you do on uh, in terms of consulting basis maybe up front definitely um, yeah. yeah yeah we and help, with help all people those. do that yeah and and the earlier the better there's there's one group that buys a lot of properties across the country and we help them with all their properties and they get us in so early and it just makes it so much easier when we can be involved in, and even do things prior to their webinar where they can present on their webinar, you know, renderings or uh, what it's going to look like, makeover ideas. And that helps them, you know, raise in 48 hours on all these big deals. So it's helpful. Is there anything else? Um, like, I guess in what I'm asking people in terms of in today's market, um, people are always looking for like the most bang for your buck. Um, out there. I guess that's what, what people in single family always do, right? There's always these articles on what's the best upgrade or best uh, money spent on getting the household um, in terms of the, the properties that you're working on now, what are general partners spending a majority of their money on in terms of um, CapEx right now? Yeah, I think the leasing office would be number one. I think signage is probably number two. Um, I think it's really important to have directional signage. One of my pet peeves is pulling into a property and not being able to find the leasing office. There's just nothing more irritating than that. So that's already a bad feeling, you know, for someone. So making sure there's directional signage throughout the property and it's very easy to find. And then having the exterior of that leasing office look amazing before they even pull up. Like I always talk about, you know, that the the drop or the walkway needs to be swept daily. That rug outside the doorway needs to be vacuumed daily. That door doesn't need to squeak when you open it. It needs to not have any, you know, chip paint, that kind of thing. So the leasing office, you know, is a great uh, area, but then also, you know, the, the exteriors are awesome to kind of work on that, but the amenities, adding amenities. So if we can get a little small business center in that leasing office and photograph that, and that's another amenity to list on the website, that's not very expensive to do. And it's another thing that will separate you from other properties. So even like a small bark park, like we, we did a small bark park recently at a property and the before and after of that is amazing. And, and with people during COVID, they adopted a lot more pets. And so they're working from home. They use these bark parks a lot more than they used to. So I would definitely try to find a spot for that over even something else. Uh, in this case, they're, they're using those bark parks a lot and just you know, community kind of feel, anything you can get a community feel about, like the pool area. We do all the pool furniture and umbrellas. And I always recommend a lot of color there. Don't go to Lowe's or whatever and get neutral furniture or Sam's and, and throw it out there. We need a lot of color. That photograph on the website is super important to get more traffic to the property. So you have a much bigger group of people to choose from. And you can choose the cream of the crop applicants, not just like these dribbly little you know, applicants that are not qualifying. So we've got to keep driving traffic uh, from the website. What do you think? Um, so in the past couple of years, you've started investing in more properties on the multifamily side. Um, 
is there anything that has has changed um based on being sort of on both sides now like is there something that now that you're an investor you understand uh, that these investors were kept telling you for like 20 years before that yeah well i do think working with the property management company is key um, I think having your finger on the pulse of everything that's going on on that property is super important, really being involved and, um, you know, not letting things fall through the cracks and just making sure that your on-site staff is really happy and staying in touch with them and, you know, community events and, and all of those kind of things. So I think just that whole vibe of really being people centric and, and, you know, keeping up with your people that are running the property um, is super important. I think that's the thing I've noticed the most is, to really stay in touch with the on-site team. And I don't know how many old capital conferences you've gone to or what you've heard about the old capital conference. Do you have, I've been asking people, um, do you have a favorite memory or conversation from a previous event? Yes. Um, my, I did not prep you for that. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, I do remember my very first event, my very first old capital event. And it was the one where Nick Flewellen was like in a skit. Y'all did a skit. <laughs> It was just hilarious. I just, I just thought that was so cool. That was my first broker panel to ever hear. And I was so mm -hmm. impressed. I mean, I just took a million notes. I went up and met some of the brokers, which I'd never had the opportunity to do before. That was a big deal to me to be able to actually go up and talk to the brokers. And then also I met several people. I actually sat next to someone that I, I met and she ended up being already in my group that I didn't realize and um, have had a great relationship with her. But I met several people that, that day or that couple of days that I still am really good friends with today. And I just happened to meet them there, you know? So I think that's extremely valuable and, and y'all are providing that, you know, for all of us. I mean, Lou Holtz was there speaking and I remember that. And I just think it's a great event. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's one of those that like, um, like you try to convince people to come, but then once people have been like, you don't have to convince anybody anymore. No. They just like, it's to in one day, like, uh, where can you meet four or 500 people who are like in the industry that you're in day in and day out? And then instead of trying to call them or reach them, you can just, you know, walk across the, <laughs> walk across yes. the table or, or grab them when they're sitting at the other table um, or grab them after they talk on a panel um, and just um, be able to meet with them. And then all of a sudden your, your connection with that person is so much stronger. And so yes. I think that's, yeah, it's a huge, huge ellipse. Um, so, uh, appreciate you coming on. You will be at the conference. You guys are sponsors. So we appreciate that. And, um, if you guys have any questions for Lisa, what's the best way for people to reach out to you, Lisa? I think the best way is you can go on our website and you can even make appointments and things there. But if you want to email, it's info at LandryDesigns.com. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Lisa, for coming on and we will see you in September. Thanks for allowing us to be a part of it. We're excited. All right. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye.